Well, now turning to this country, the self-made man who took Tim Hortons from local coffee chain to Canadian mega brand has died. Ron Joyce's name may not be on the signs, but his relentless drive is why there are so many of them. Can you imagine buying a Tim Horton franchise from a, a hockey player and a dumb cop? By his own admission, Joyce knew nothing about the food business when he met the former Toronto Maple Leaf in the 1960s. But he scraped some money together and dove in. Originally as Horton's first franchisee, but before long, in his words, he was running the show. On average, 1,500 people come in here every day. When Tim Horton died in a car crash in 1974, Joyce took sole control of the business, leading its rapid growth, though not without some controversy, including legal battles with Horton's widow, Lori. But business boomed as Joyce honed the key to Tim's success, an inextricable link to Canadian identity. From the folksy branding, value for the dollar, and close ties to hockey, few things say Canada more than Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons, can I take your order, please? It's freaking mighty chilly. It's a good thing I went to Tim Hortons and I got myself a, a large double-double just to take off that breeze, right? You know. Oh, jeez. Even the people who aren't from Canada. Oh, this coffee is excellent. <laughs> After selling the business in the mid-90s, he stayed active, opening an air charter company in Hamilton and a luxury golf resort near his childhood home in Nova Scotia. Selling control of the company to U.S.-based Wendy's International in the 90s made Joyce a billionaire, even though he later said it was the life's, uh, his life's biggest regret. And the journalist who co-wrote Joyce's book says his attachment for Tim's never died. I think Ron quite publicly has had his spats with Tim Hortons over the last 10 or 15 years. Um, from the point where he stepped away from the board of Wendy's, which owned Tim's at the time, um, he had an attachment to the brand and to the people who operated the original stores, which went beyond business. It was personal loyalty, and I think when the brand started to change, he grew increasingly uncomfortable with some of the direction it was taking, and he could occasionally just show up in the media to somebody to ask him the question, and he'd espouse his opinion, and he was never short on opinions. One part of Joyce's legacy that can't be ignored is his philanthropy. From kids' camps to hospitals to universities, he changed people's lives across the country. The CBC's Brett Ruskin spoke to some of them. So he believed if he was lucky enough to be as successful he was, he was going to give it back. This rehabilitation centre is used every day by kids from across the Maritimes. It's located here at the IWK Health Centre, one of the many organisations where Ron Joyce would show up, big cheque in hand, and offer support. He was going to donate a million and then he saw a child being wheeled in to be operated on and it just touched his heart and he actually said, I'll double it. And he did the all double double of all time. He gave us two million. I was going to build a causeway, but he's... Joyce did enjoy a lavish lifestyle. Fancy cars, big homes and private jets. But he also shared the wealth. One day each year, all of the proceeds from coffee sold across the country would go to help send underprivileged kids to one of the many Tim Hortons camps that dotted the Canadian landscape. That's a rod for when you can only use one rod. Speaking to CBC News in 2006, he said giving back was always part of the Tim Hortons corporate identity. Because that really is the secret of the success of this company. It's in community involvement. It's it's putting kids in soccer clothes, hockey teams, baseball teams, taking kids to camp, being caring about the community. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's become such a great Canadian icon. Aisha Gatouche is a computer science student at Dalhousie University. She received a scholarship from the Joyce Family Foundation. I think people like this, like it's amazing how much of an effect you can have on someone's life without knowing them personally. And I think Someone like that should be celebrated and remembered for all the great things that they did. Ron Joyce's life changed over the years as his company grew, but he never forgot where he came from. It was always that part of him that grounded him, so he really felt he was obliged to give back, and he did. Brett Ruskin, CBC News, Halifax.